So there's been wall-to-wall -wall media coverage this week about the Hyperloop competition. The Hyperloop, once a concept, now very much in development, uh, is a mode of transportation that has the potential to change how we think about travel. Hyperloop, a massive solar-powered tube, would allow passengers to get from Los Angeles to San Francisco in less than 30 minutes. It's going to be able to reach, in theory, speeds of 700, maybe even 800 miles an hour. Just to get from LA to San Francisco in 35 minutes, there's, there's almost nothing else like that. The Hyperloop high-speed transportation system has moved a step closer to reality. Uh, but to explore the boundaries of physics and see what is really, really possible. And I think we'll find that it's way more incredible than, than we ever realized. Um, that, that's really the overarching purpose of, of this uh, Hyperloop competition. Teams competed to design subscale versions of the transport pods that could one day whisk passengers between San Francisco and Los Angeles in under half an hour. They've actually built one. I mean, maybe I was wrong about this. Maybe the Hyperloop isn't all hype. And MIT's pod is inside the Hyperloop test track here in Hawthorne, California, and they're about to be the first team ever to send their pod through for a money run as fast as they can. You can hear the crowd cheering behind me. I'm sure this competition's really going to show me just how advanced this technology is. This technology that's almost here. Those tubes could be the future of travel. The technology that's going to change the way we think about travel. By the end of 2016, the end of this year, we'll have demonstrated Hyperloop operating with all of its components. We'll have showed the world this isn't a pipe dream. This is actually reality. Our ability to travel faster across the world has consistently been a catalyst for change. This effect can be seen right back to the domestication of the horse. Hyperloop One designers say this technology could be ready to go by 2020. We're only just talking a few years away. Do you actually believe that that's possible? Probably going to be cargo first. Probably going to be a route that's not 300 miles, but maybe 50. When I sat in one, Hyperloop starts to feel real. Will the seats be more reclined? Because uh, I going 750 miles an hour, I feel like I kind of want to lean back. <laughs> or uh, maybe not. So the test track they built was about four-fifths of a mile long. The tube is 4,150 feet long. Seriously, they couldn't even build a mile-long test track. And even at that, that's the second largest vacuum chamber in the world. Yeah, and, and so we, we got the... I'm told this is like the, maybe the second biggest uh, vacuum chamber in the world after the Large Hadron Collider. So it's uh, kind of exciting. And that's only one four hundredth of the actual size of the proposed Californian Hyperloop. You know, the one that's going to get you from Los Angeles to San Francisco in about 30 minutes. Traveling at almost the speed of sound, the speed of a bullet. Down a tube, essentially a rifle barrel uh, in a vacuum, essentially in space. Well, naturally, seeing as this was such a plausible and clearly financially viable project, they went straight in and started hiring experienced engineers to design this, right? And so we thought a great way for kind of the world to innovate uh, would be to throw a, a student competition where we built a test track, a Hyperloop test track, um, and then invited student teams from around the world to build the best possible pod to go in that test track. Uh, no. Nah. They had a design competition for students. Hyperloop, the technology is pretty much there already. We just have to implement it. One of the things this competition is for is to show the world that we can do this and convince them that we should build it somewhere and get the ball rolling. Which I'm sure will yield superb results. Now you have to bear in mind that just to get something into or out of this uh, Hyperloop test track takes about half an hour, you know, to pump down the Hyperloop to its vacuum level. Because this is such a large chamber and it takes a lot of power and a lot of uh, resources for us to pump it down, we want to make sure before we put the pods in here that nothing is going to happen to them under a vacuum. Different teams want to go to different pressure levels, but if we go down to like a fairly low level, it'll probably take about 30 minutes. It takes longer than the proposed journey time from Los Angeles to San Francisco. Would allow passengers to get from Los Angeles to San Francisco in less than 30 minutes. Just to get in to the Hyperloop. We're waiting for Delft to do their run. Um, they put it in the tube about an hour ago, then they took it out, then they put it back in. In fact, with some of the entries, it was more like an hour and a half. And then they took it out, and then they put it back in, 
and now it's in and it's being pressurized, which takes about 30 to 45 minutes. It is six o'clock. The ceremony is supposed to be about 4.35. But whatever, it's a prototype. I'm sure once the pods are in there, they will travel at incredible speeds. I mean, we were promised, you know, 700 miles an hour. Hi, I'm Steve Davis. I'm the Director of Advanced Projects at SpaceX. Hyperloop is a point-to-point -point transportation system uh, over ground that's meant to allow people to travel at extremely high speeds, up to uh, 700 miles an hour. The, uh, the idea originated from uh, Elon back in 2013. You don't have wind resistance as you push your pod or capsule down the tube, so the pods can get to speeds upwards of 750 miles an hour. Now, we're not going to maybe see that today. Our tube is only one and a quarter kilometers long. But we do expect to see speeds upwards of 80 miles an hour, perhaps, depending on how things go. Actually, no. The top speed was about 60 miles per hour. Um, got up to about 80 kilometers an hour down the tube. I think I think that's what all the all the uh, vehicles are going to be doing today. Okay. Um, so. Awesome. So 80 kilometers per hour. That is a fantastic speed, and you guys have set the bar for the remainder of the teams that have made it to the final competition stage. So only three capsules actually went into the vacuum chamber. There was the uh, roomy traveling comfort war design. There was the uh, slightly bigger, but not much, Delft design. Then there was the absolutely tiny MIT entry. And only one of those made it to the end of the track. I entrusted the future of mankind's transport to students. And this is what they came up with. How could this possibly have happened? In fact, it's worse than that. You see, these vehicles are actually pushed up to speed by an electric vehicle. And then they're pushed about one quarter of the distance, which means the MIT pod here, which was selected from one team out of about 1,200. Uh, of the original 1,200 teams that entered the competition, 120 made it to College Station, Texas. Um, by the end of that weekend, there were 30 teams left, and we were, we were fortunate enough to be one of those teams. The absolute cream of the crop. Up top here, inside, you see we have the seat where the dummy goes. And it's to travel about 50 meters or something. Now it's about to kick off. Remember, the SpaceX pusher will bring it up to speed. Then it will detach and let Hyperloop MIT do its thing. Okay, you ready for this? So the uh, pusher is going. It's accelerating the pod. The pod's getting faster and faster. 30 kilometers an hour, 40 kilometers an hour, 50, and so forth. Up to 60, 70. And it's released the pod and... The pod stopped. <laughs> uh, have to go maybe, I don't know, 50 meters or something. Elon Musk decided to host a competition. He told the world, come up with Hyperloop designs and let the best design win. Indeed, the winning team actually only managed to go slightly further on its own. So here we go, the push is off and it's accelerating the pod. 30 kilometers to that, 50 kilometers to 60, 70. Wow, it's a record, 80 kilometers an hour. 80, 90 kilometers per hour. And it releases the pod and the pod stops. One of the things this competition is for is to show the world that we can do this and convince them that we should build it somewhere and get the ball rolling. So yeah, it turns out the only pod to get to the end was the war team with its uh, spacious transport which did actually get to the end of the track, although just look at all the dust that's thrown up on this thing. So here we go, and the pusher starts, and it accelerates at 30 kilometers an hour, 40, 50, this is sort of, you know, residential type speeds. And just look at all the dust this thing's throwing up, and it's approaching where the others stopped, and it blows straight past where all the others stopped, going at about mm, 80 kilometers an hour. This is 50 miles per hour, it's not, quite 700 miles an hour but it is filling up the tube very effectively with an awful lot of dust yeah all those advantages of losing the friction of the atmosphere that's really going to cut down on the resistance i mean shit at this rate it's not that the hyperloop just won't be able to challenge cars it might even struggle to challenge walking what gets me though is what were they thinking if you want to demonstrate that this Hyperloop thing is possible, you would need a track at least long enough to get up to speed, about 10 times this size minimum. So why didn't they try that? Well, as I've stated before, building a large vacuum chamber is crazy expensive, and the practicalities go up exponentially as this thing gets bigger. 
as the track gets up to, you know, sort of 10 kilometers, 10 miles, that sort of thing, you get real expansion issues. The pumping down issues multiply. The hazards of a tube failure go up like crazy. And once your capsule's up to speed, any failure will not only destroy the capsule, but also the Hyperloop. And honestly, with that sort of cost of failure, I'm really not so sure you want to be outsourcing this design to students. One of the things this competition is for is to show the world that we can do this and convince them that we should build it somewhere and get the ball rolling. I mean, shit, these things aren't even in the league of getting to the end of a one mile long track. I mean, the dumb thing is, if you'd have simply put an electric car in this vacuum tube, it would have smoked them all. I mean, hell, the thing that they used to push the pods up to speed would have smoked everything in this competition. Uh, to get people excited about new forms of transport, um, things that may be completely different from what we, we see today. Look, it's just a reality. In terms of speed and convenience, the Hyperloop is orders of magnitude behind just regular driving from Los Angeles to San Francisco, and another one or two orders of magnitude behind what they're promising. So, reality check time. All Hyperloop stories include this promise of 600 miles per hour. Hyperloop, a massive solar-powered tube, would allow passengers to get from Los Angeles to San Francisco in less than 30 minutes. It's going to be able to reach, in theory, speeds of 700, maybe even 800 miles an hour. Just to get from L.A. to San Francisco in 35 minutes, there's, there's almost nothing else like that. Our aim is to connect the world like never before in history. What the Internet did in the sphere of communication, Hyperloop will certainly do in the realm of transportation. But seeing this thing hover and seeing it move is so futuristic, but it's really right around the corner. You sit in a pod and are catapulted through a depressurized tube at over 700 miles per hour. And travel at speeds greater than 600 miles per hour, with tickets costing less than a seat aboard a plane or train. Awesome, so 80 kilometers per hour, that is a fantastic speed and you guys have set the bar for the remainder of the teams. But curiously, none of them tell you that two out of the three pods selected from over 1,200 didn't even make it to the end of a one mile track, even though they were pushed for about one quarter of the way by what was essentially an electric car. Yeah, hype a loop. Pretty much what it says on the box. When I sat in one, Hyperloop starts to feel real. Will the seats be more reclined? Because uh, I going 750 miles an hour, I feel like I kind of want to lean back. <laughs> no worries, dude. Hyperloop can do that for you.